Hello everyone, this video is going to go through a MATLAB script that does exponential extrapolation. Uh, it actually, the script actually takes a, a set of data, uses sections of the data to do exponential extrapolation, and then makes a video of the extrapolation process at the end. So we'll go through it quickly and I'll show you the output. Uh, this, first we start off with our, our usual clear all, close all, CLC command to clear the command window. So then, all my input variables I usually put at the beginning of the script. This isn't the, the bestly, or the best uh, kind of labeled script I've ever written, but I'm just kind of going through the the scripts that I've put on firesciencetools.com so that people can use them more more easily, um, easier, more easily. I don't think it's correct English. Anyway, uh, we have a sample selection. Uh, Zero uses a continuously increasing set of data. One uses a select set of data moving along the entire data set. So you can run it either way uh, by changing this this variable from zero to one or one to zero either way. DT is the the change in time step for how how much you're going to move every time the the iteration runs. So you'll see uh, what that means specifically as we go through the code. These three lines are part of the video generation code uh, it's just you're gonna say how many frames per second you're gonna give the you're gonna give the movie a name and then you're gonna um, start the AV file you're gonna open it up alright so uh, first off to do this we wanna generate a set of exponential data so we, we do a little for loop we start with a counter we say we're gonna go from point one uh, to 6 by 0 0.1 and we're going to generate uh, a, a random variable. We don't want it to be purely exponential, right? So we need a, a variable that bounces around a little bit. And then we're going to generate our, our kind of our dependent variable, our exponential of, of i, which is our, our counter. And then we're going to take our data and multiply it by this random variable so that we take our exponential curve that we generate here, multiply it by a random number, and then uh, create a random set of exponential, a random set of numbers that are close to an exponential curve. And then we say our, our data x is i times 100, just to make it bigger than uh, this 0 0.1. We're just going to manipulate the axis a little bit and then move our counter up a little bit. So it's just a standard loop to generate some some data to to extrapolate let's see so then we're going to take the data we just uh, we just used and label it time and temperature so let's say we're working with the time temperature curve we got from an experiment or something like that alright so then we're going to generate a Hertz rate we're going to say okay what's the difference between the first and second time stamp so that's going to determine our sampling frequency in Hertz we don't want this step is going to determine uh, how far we're going to move along in our loop. So we're just going to round uh, the dt that we set earlier divided by the hertz. And we're going to set a counter. Counter 2 is a second counter. All right, so uh, we have a conditional statement here that we're going to use if, if this cutoff we set earlier is 0, or if sample section is zero, then our cutoff is zero. If sample section is one, then we're going to set it to a hundred. All right. So here is our main loop. We have this this very large for loop. It's going to keep going on for a while, all the way down to here. So after that, we'll start making our our, our movie figures. So we're going to use our first counter. We're going to go. We're going to start at twenty. Uh, plus the cutoff length, and then start at 20 plus the cutoff length, move by the step, and end at the length of time. So it's a standard for loop kind of setup. We have a conditional statement here to determine uh, our x and y are, are going to be our input into our exponential curve fitting. So there's another uh, video that explains how to do exponential curve fitting. That's this code. Um, it is all explained. If you look up 
exponential curve fitting in MATLAB. There's another video that goes with this. So I'm not going to explain how to do this specifically, but we're, the important bit is setting these two input variables. So our, our independent variable and our dependent variable, depending upon how we set the sample section earlier in the code. So that's all those two things are doing. We're going to pick a different section of the of the input variable depending upon whether we want to use a section of it or the entire uh, collection of data up to one point. So this is all our uh, exponential curve fitting code, and then we're gonna we're gonna plot it all. So we're gonna we're gonna close the figures, uh, generate figure one. We're gonna put hold on. Then we're gonna plot the data using the calculation as red stars. We're gonna plot the predicted line is a green line uh, with width four, so it's gonna be kind of thick. And then plot all of the time temperature curve with uh, blue blue plus symbols. And then we're going to generate a legend, uh, label the axes, and create our own x and y limits, and then title it using uh, predicted curve, predicted temperature curve. All right. Then we're going to turn our hold off. We're going to set it to pause for 0.3 seconds. This, depending on the speed of your computer, if you don't include a pause for a short period of time and you're generating a video in this fashion, uh, there will be another video that talks about generating movies in MATLAB, which isn't the most efficient way to do it, but it does work. Um, but you need to include a pause statement so that your computer has enough time to image the the figure that's generated, send that data to the AVI file before the, the, the figure is closed in the next iteration of the loop. Uh, so then we're going to use this variable h to get the frame of the current figure, add the frame to the AVI job, and then increase counter 2 so that the loop continues to run. And at the end, the very end, we're going to end uh, the AVI job. This this may actually add the last frame twice, I can't remember, but I always include it in this fashion just so one of the frames is lost. And this is the important bit, is close close the AVI job. If, the, if for some reason your script crashes before it gets to this endpoint, it's a good idea to go in and run this line by itself. You can highlight and hit F9 and it'll run a line of code and that will finish whatever movie has been generated before your code crashed. Alright, so we can run this code. If we run it uh, you'll see uh, these figures kind of come in and out. If I'm clever, I will stop it where you can see. So we can see it didn't finish the legend, but uh, we can see this in red stars is the section of data that I'm using in the extrapolation. The blue crosses, they're quite small, are all of the data itself, and then the green line is the kind of the extrapolated line. So it does a pretty good job. Granted, this data is very close to actually being truly exponential because it is an exponential line multiplied by a random function. So if you have a more real world data, it won't work as well. But it, this, is, this code will do a exponential extrapolation using MATLAB. Like I said before, it's available at firesciencetool.com in the link below. Uh, so I hope you find this useful and have a good day.